tuned to Eager, you're watching Hot New Hip Hop, Rain Bandits all day, let's get it. So I started rapping, but I didn't want to use anybody's beats, so I started making my own beats with Fruity Loops and stuff, and then from Fruity Loops, transitioned into Logic, and then from Logic, just building the beats on Logic, and then recording on top of the tracks that I produced it on, so making whole songs on Logic. And that's how like the upbringing came through for production. My early on sound was pretty like minimalistic and like boom bap ish, or like it may have been like some trap stuff here and there, but it wasn't like the complete version of what it is now. And I think listening to different forms of music and different genres and adding samples and then synthesizers and such things added to that. As far as like making music while still going into school, like it gets in the way. As far as my major was communications, but it's more oriented towards that. And as like we transition into the next year, we'll try to see like how much we can balance it further. But as where I'm at right now, it's just that music in college, but music is taking over. So we'll see what that entails for the future. So my influences are everything from Kanye, Cudi, Drake, the Jay Z's, to like minimal grooves, anything from pop punk stuff to like like indie stuff. Um, basically, just juxtaposing everything together and making it a little bit more street and more gritty. I feel like that's what like like conveys to the masses, and that's why a lot of people can connect to it from different genres. I just use a Rode NTK and like my MacBook, and basically like learning how acoustics works and just like EQing and stuff. As far as that, and when you make a mix, basically what you're trying to do is make it to fill in the space. So even incorporating this instrument, I know for Ball's life, the steel drums were panned on one side, whereas the saxophone came underneath it and stuff. And it's just a little trick that I've learned over the years because I've always wanted to use like live instrumentation in my production. Even with this song, like in the progression of the song, it's like very, very tense. It's like I don't even mean to flex on you and it's like happy kind of. And then dun, 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 And the homie, big homie, Tim LaRue, the young god of this stuff, like back behind the scenes made that happen. And me, uh, him and Chad made that happen. So we put Mike on this track and we put McConan on the track. And they were both digging it before like the remix even came out, and they're like, yeah, we'll definitely do this. And this is before McConan was like big, big. This is before Mike was big, big. So like, they both got on it, and we just had fun with it. We shot it in New York like a couple weeks later, and that's like the standout track. We ended it with that yesterday at the show, and everybody went crazy. All the songs that I sampled for Love Project were all love songs. So like, going into that, but like sometimes making these happy love songs darker and stuff like that. I know for Ooh Ooh didn't have any release samples, but it had a Jimi Hendrix interview talking about music and stuff. And then I put like the synth pads and like any of that and I try to make it like as like on some like future lean codeine crazy type stuff meets like but it's it's a turn down song, that's what I call it. Like it's not a turn up, you turn up songs like everybody's mobbing out. You got the little auto-tune hook on the little 808 beat and whatnot, but I'm talking about like like depression, I'm talking about like like finding yourself in like grim subjects. So like basically hitting the people with that, it's a turn down song, that's what I call that. So Setting up the moods for the songs and stuff, like whether it's like me floating on the track, like singing or like rapping wise, like with Pocketed Lighter, that was on some straight boom back stuff. Whereas like you're exposing the culture of people like with po like lighters and pocketing people's lighters, but also like correlating that to like love and stuff on a boom back beat. And the verses are like very like sharp and whatnot, whereas the hook is like I want to groove tonight. So like just like messing with people and like giving them the moves for both sides. Like as a debut artist, like when you debut a project, like there's a lot of conventions that come into it. So like we had to like hit every single demographic, see where like our lane is and whatnot. But we also wanted to make it cohesive. So I feel like I did that with the album as far as like those tracks like flowing into one another. But like basically I want to be able to be like, I can do everything, anything I want in hip hop and it's still going to sound good and it's still going to sound authentic. As far as where we want to take it, like, we want to take it to the point where we have as much clout as the majors, where we have those connections and whatnot, but we don't want to compromise anything. And I will, like, I will turn down, like, whatever amount if it has to deal with compromising anything. And we know, like, we know about people trying to, like, sign big deals and knowing that they won't be able to recoup off of that, and, like, you don't want to fall on that track. So, like, if any major, like, reaches out, you got to come with the right situation. More so, it's not really about the money because we know we get it eventually. We don't really care about we are more about focusing on investing in the brand, investing in the art, and making it like so, like pushing it. Probably take a semester off and just cook for months straight, just like it's work time. Basically, the way everybody else is like, oh my goodness, you getting on now? For me, it's just like I'm just I just got 
I've been working so hard, like interning, trying to get a job, finally getting the job. It's time to work. So that's what I'm on right now. But yeah, I'm looking forward to making new stuff and making crazier stuff. Like the whole next project is halfway done. And that sounds crazier than the Love Project. About two years ago, I went to school to take a recording engineering, ended up buying me a little studio set up, preamp, whole Pro Tools jump off. That's why Thirst 48 sounds so raw, because it's a lot of, like, my kid is actually in the mixes on that tape, because there's no soundproof in my room. After we laid it down in March, uh, six to seven months later, you know what I'm saying, I'm right here. I mean, just that simple. We just didn't wait to see what was gonna happen with it. You know what I mean? We just we really pushed it.